Aloha, it's Lauren Adams, and welcome back to the New Wave 3. I'm sitting here working with my new product that I am really jazzed about. I hope you're going to enjoy watching this part of the program. While you watch me paint, let me risk my reputation and your mental health and play some of my own original music in the background. This is a multi-track recording that I did on a K250 Kurzweil sequencer. And I played all 38 of the instruments comprising this multi-track recording. And it was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy it. The theme of this multi-track recording is a traditional old song that I fantasized about since I was about 15 years old. I played this song on the accordion since I was a kid. And I've made many different recordings of it during, you know, the last 50 years of my life. Anyway, it is Malaguena by Ernesto Lacona. And this is my own fantasy version, uh, taking the themes from his beautiful melody and just kind of running with it to Never Never Land. And I got to say, this is probably one of the best recordings I've ever made. I just love it, and a lot of people do. Thank you for listening. And since I'm sharing my personal life with you, I might as well point out that I have so many things to be thankful for. I live a charmed life. I don't know why. I just kind of have always been very sincere about everything I do. And I've had a wonderful life because of it. So while we're listening to Malaguena, I want to tell you about all of the things I'm thankful for. I'm thankful that I was born in a free country. I'm thankful but I was born in Indiana. I'm a Hoosier. <laughs> I'm thankful that my mother was a beautiful lady that was a little bit crazy. That's why I'm a little crazy, I guess. But when I was little, she took me around and personally told me the names of all of the plants, all of the flowers, all of the insects, all of the birds, and she taught me how to cook and learn how to read for myself. She took me to the library and showed me the card catalog file on how to look up anything I wanted to and to follow through if it was important. I'm thankful that I left Indiana at a young age and moved to Southern California. In the Newport Beach area is the first time I saw the ocean and I just went into this phase. It's as though I realized I had drowned or something, or at least been a, a salty old sea captain in another life or something. I, I didn't know, but I just, you know, at nine years old, I made a picture of me and my friend down by the sea and this wave splashing on the beach and I'm loading a whole bunch of stuff on the back of a bird. Anyway, that's a long story short. Then I was uh, in high school, a, uh, a serious cadet. My dad was a famous soldier field decorated by President Truman to the rank of Sergeant Major. So I, of course, wanted a career military, too. And I was Master Sergeant of Drill Platoon and 
color guard. We did a lot of parade duty. And uh, I graduated from high school, got on the bus, and joined the Air Force. And about 62 hours later, they sent me home, classified one Y, flat feet, and emotionally not capable of combat, or I was truly a conscientious objector, although nothing but testing revealed that. I was an expert marksman and a master sergeant, so I kind of knew military chain of command and how to take orders and how to follow through, but my feet prevented that. So I went into nursing instead. And then one day, <laughs> in June of 1967, a charged nurse bought one of my paintings and I went to director nursing and resigned. I also resigned nursing college and theological seminary. Went on tour with a bunch of gypsy artists. There were about 300 of us. We toured and did the grand openings for Ernest Hahn shopping centers all over America. And uh, we were in motorhomes, wagons, trailers, circled the wagons in the middle of the giant parking lot of every brand new shopping center. Had a big bonfire, accordion, guitars, and singing and dancing and hooting and hollering. And then we went in and set up our wares. We set up on Thursdays, tore down on Sunday night, and drove to the next town. That was the gypsy lifestyle. I was second in gross sales for a couple of years in a row. Stayed on the tour until Cadbury Stampede in 1972 in Calgary, Alberta. I got off the tour, sold my entire existing collection to a bunch of rich guys, moved into the penthouse of the Port of Trade Tower, and shared an office with the mayor of Vancouver. In a very high league, I guess surrounded by the cream de la creme. The mayor partied in my studio, the Chicago Blackhawks, the Vancouver Canucks, the Maple Leafs. All the people that I was in business with were in the hockey world. So Stan Makita and Pitt Martin became actually good friends of mine. We went out and partied together. We went out and watched a game one time and some guy's face came right over in mine and got crushed into the glass <laughs> It was the weirdest thing I'd ever seen. It didn't really turn me off of sports, but I realized that there were bigger animals in the jungle than jackrabbits, fluffy bunnies, and squirrels, and the, these guys were Whoa. powerful kind of animals, but very kind. Anyway, those were the days. And now I would just like to say, hey, thanks for watching. And you know, part four is next.